Thank you, musician. We want to pray for our city, okay? I think one or two weeks ago, okay, there was a rain. Not now, okay? I think it was two weeks ago, there was a rain and I just felt, I just felt uh, that the rain, the way the, way, the, the way the rain rain, okay, is very heavy. So I was telling Pastor Lily, why don't we pray for the city? And we hold hand, okay, we hold hand and pray. And God was good, the rain was coming and off, coming and off, okay. But then recently, okay, you, you, I think Antiki, Capis, and uh, Auckland, okay, they are quite badly affected. I don't know really about Ilolo City, okay. So we really want to pray for God's mercy, God's protection. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, we unite together to pray. Father, we, we thank you for rain. But when there is a heavy downpour, you know that the people are affected because there will be flood. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you will just remove the typhoon by in right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the sky light up with sunlight one more time. Let the, let the dark cloud clear in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the people enjoy the sunlight in the name of Jesus Christ that they can go about in their daily activities. Father, I pray that you protect, you have mercy upon the people in Antiki, in Auckland, in Capis, and also some in Ilolo City. Father, I pray that you protect our home, you preserve them, and you cover them by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Have mercy upon our city right now, even long. Father, right now, I just pray that you will just anoint this message. In Jesus' name, I give thanks and we pray. Amen. Praise God. If your Bible lesson to Psalms 81, verse 8 to 16. Psalms 81, verse 8 to 16. You got it? Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee. O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall, be, there shall no strange God be in thee, neither shall thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, and brought you out of the land of sin. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own hearts. At last, they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people have, had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my way. Then I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The hater of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheats, and with honey out of the rock, should I have satisfied thee? Okay, I'm going to title my message this morning, God's view of the human life. God's view of the human life. How does God look at us human? Okay, it is a kind of instruction, and what is God's instruction, and God is God's, what is God's view of each and every one of our life? The Bible mode regarding the human life for each and every one of us differs in the way in which we look at our own lives. We human beings, we naturally put ourselves as the center of all things. I think the new generation, okay, everything has become man, the center of all things. But the Bible teaches otherwise. The Bible teaches that God is the center as well as the source of life. God is the center of all things and God is the source of life. <clears throat> okay, you look at religion. Even religious people, they think and they talk of religion as an important element in their life. For this, we do not find any fault with them. Let's look at the Catholic. Let's look at the Catholic. You know, I've been here for so many years, okay? I look at them, and every time when I meet them, and I, I say, is there anything I want you, you want me to pray for you? I notice that they, they, they go to church to seek for good health, peace in the family, and God's provision. I notice these are three main, in, three main criteria that they're always asking for. Good health, peace in the family, and God's provision. So they see that they go to church, they go to, to church, they see religion as essential for true happiness. And they see that if you neglect religion, you will be something that is disastrous. Well, the Bible agreed to that. The Bible affirmed to that, that it is essential. Man is made, but then... The Bible adds something that is more important, more important. Man is made for God. 
See, we fail to understand this one thing. Man is made for God. And they, miss the, if they will miss the whole purpose and blessing of life if they are separated from God. Okay? We are so absorbed in the present. Now, God shows us the roots of our past, which is sin, and our fruits for the future, which is blessing. So what can we learn from, from this portion of Scripture on God's view of the human life? What is God's instruction? What is God's instruction? What does God want to say to each and every one of us? Number one, no foreign God. Psalms 81 verse 9 say, There shall no strange God be in thee, neither shall thou worship any strange God. The first thing God viewed the human life or instructed the human life is that there should be no strange God among them. You know, the word strange God is translated as foreign God in some version. Okay? The world has changed so much that today we, we not only have strange God, foreign God, but we have new gods. Okay, during the time of the Old Testament, there is no, there's no such thing as television. There's no such thing as social media. There's no such thing as the virtual world. Because this, this can become the new gods. Okay, so the term strange God can refer to the foreign God and also the new God. And God saw it. God saw it in our day. That is seen in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 17. He says, They sacrifice to demons, which were no gods, to gods they have never known, to new gods they have come of in of late, to new gods they have come in of late, whom your father had never dreaded. The new god are the modern god, the god of progress, which currently dominate the world. The new gods are the new sins. Today, young people, they don't follow the old traditions of the parents or the old traditions of the Bible. They follow the influencers. They follow the influencers. And they believe everything that is advised by the influencers. The new gods are the offering sexuality. The new god of sexual anarchy detects that sexuality is not bound by any rules. You know, there's no rules, there's no constraint, there's no natural law. The new God proclaimed a long, detailed list of sins, but it can be summarized fairly simply. Anyone professing, so if you profess to believe in the biblical concept of gender, sexuality, or marriage, you are at best a prude or a bigot. Biblical standards are considered very restrictive by the worshippers of sexual anarchy. You look at the world today, okay? You are considered very weird. Something is seriously wrong with you if you and your boyfriend and your girlfriend have not slept together before marriage. Yeah, you are very weird. You are very funny. You are not one of us. The word strange God is used in connection in the Old Testament and refers to the fact that the gods or these gods do not belong to you, do not belong to Israel, but are the gods which are worshipped by the other families and other nations. Meaning to say that they are the gods that are worshipped by the people outside of the church. If they, worship the, they, they, if they are worshipped by the people outside of the church, we understand them, but they are not to be worshipped by the people in the church. <clears throat> you know, a more exact translation will give us the God of strangers, okay? Some 400 years ago, okay, the slavery of Egypt had exposed Israel to many gods in Egypt. The command God gave to Israel when they came out of Egypt is stated here. Coming out of Egypt, Israel is commanded not to worship any foreign god. Same thing, when we are born again, when we accept Christ as a personal saviour, we are not to have this strange god, foreign god or new god in our life. The reason why Israel exiled for 3,000 years and they only came back in 1948 was because of this one thing, nothing else. Strange God. For 3,000 years, they were exiled through, through all over the world because of this one thing. Strange God. So don't take something as very light. If you worship the strange God, you are like the Israel. You can be exiled by God. God requires Loyalty from each and every one of us. 
We are never to bow down to any alien God. Identifying himself as God, the Lord your God, he urged his people to completely look to him. You know, the problem is not, is not that the world does not know God. We don't expect the world to know God. The problem is that the people of God do not know God. Instead of worshipping God and Him alone, Christians seem to be worshipping the God of the secular culture. You know, we, we are in a new society. We are totally in a new culture. Okay? And we are worshipping the God of the secular culture, the God of wealth, the God of pleasure, the God of fame, the God of status, the God of self-absorption. Many Christians, you would vehemently deny, deny that you are worshipping the strange God. But you did it just like that. You actually did it. You know, wise men say this. Okay, wise men say this. You list, you, I think I put it there. He said this. Over the last 30 years of working in education, various paria, parish ministries, and my own family experiences, my own family, my own children, it seems that as a culture, we have an unquenchable thirst for more. More pleasure, comfort, success, more stuff. We are often looking for the next greatest vacation, the perfect career, the house with everything, the latest technology, and hoping that all this will make us very, very happy. It is a heartbreaking struggle for more. Our wants becomes the focus of our daily life and the center of our worship. In some way, our worship is self, me and my one. It's so true. I look at this church. We are more than 30 years old. We see, frankly, I see members experiencing more comfort, success. We are seeing people having a home and with a lot of things in the home. People are getting better because of jobs and they are always looking for the next vacation. I'm sure, I'm just telling you frankly, I'm sure that God has no problem, no problem of us having all this. Please, don't misunderstand God. Don't misunderstand what I'm trying to say. God has no problem of us having all these things. But if these things are the main focus of your life, if these things are the main focus of your life, then I'll say that these are your foreign gods. These are your foreign gods. You know, I look at my children. Okay, my children is 33, 31 years old. They have grown up. They have really grown up. They are back in Singapore, and Singapore is a very developed society. And I want to be very honest. They have all the things. They have all the things in their life and even more. I want to tell you, when I look at them, I am scared for them. I don't understand, but I'm scared. Inside me, I'm scared. Is this the focus of their life? If yes, these have become the gods of their life. Is the main focus of your life on all these things, on all these foreign gods? Or your main focus in life is when I, 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 I come to the Philippines, my main focus in life is God, my work with God, my relationship with God, my calling, my purpose, my plan, God's plan for my life, my calling to share the gospel, my testimony to people who look at us. God was the one who brought us out of Egypt, out of sin. God is the one that brought you out of sin, out of bondage. You know, I've seen this church Okay, we used to have a lot of people, they are very, very poor. I tell you, friendly, very, very poor. And I've seen you all move to another level. And God has brought you out of sin, bondage, and sl slavery. And no other gods have done these things for you. The world has not done it. The devil has not done it. The flesh has not done it. These are because of God. And it is not for us to bow down to them. If there are foreign gods in our life, you have to repent. You have to repent because they take us away from God. 
We don't know how to talk to our children to tell frankly. The only thing that we can do is to pray. Okay, they go to church, like you go to church, okay? They go to church. I'm not saying they don't go to church. They have self group. They go to self group. But I'm scared for them. We must repent. Because they take us away from God. Psalms 81 is a call to repent. God's view of the human life, God's first thing, first instruction to us is no foreign gods. No foreign gods. Throughout one Christian life, every believer must be brought again, again, back again and again to a place of repentance. Brokenness over sin. Turning away from sin. Uh, to be an ongoing lifestyle. Not an occasional event. You know, I've been, I've, been, I've, been a pastor, I've been a pastor for almost 37 years. I've been a Christian for more than 40 years. Every morning I wake up, I still say, God, please forgive me of my sin. I still pray like that. Forsaking, sin forsaking repentance must be an ongoing reality. You don't grow spiritually beyond the needs to acknowledge and abandon sins with a broken heart and godly sorrow. Not only does Christianity begin with repentance, Christianity continues and progresses with repentance. Is it any wonder that God is always asking His people to repent? Is it any wonder that God reminds us not to worship any strange God, foreign God or new God? So the first thing, the first instruction, the first view of the human is God say to you very clearly, no foreign God. No foreign God. And that's the first of the, all the commandments. The first, what is the first commandment? The first of the Ten Commandments. No foreign God. No foreign God. Number two, open your mouth wide. The second thing that God calls the human life is asking you to open your mouth wide. God is saying that don't turn to all these things. Turn to me. And when you turn to me, I want you to open your mouth wide and I will feel it. If you want anything extraordinary, if you want anything powerful to happen in your life, you are to open your mouth wide and God will feel it. That is in verse 10. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. God make a promise to His people. Instead of looking for all these things, foreign God to satisfy your need, God say, why can't you trust me to satisfy you? Just have faith, anticipate my provision, and I will provide. The reverse is implied. God will not fill you if your mouth is closed. Okay? God will not fill you if your mouth is closed. If there's no anticipation of faith. Let's look at the, the mother bird. Okay, do you have a picture? Okay, you see the bird with all the baby birds. There's another picture. Ah, the mother, you look at, look at the mouth of the bird, the baby bird. Go back to the first picture. Okay, look at this. You look at this. Okay. When the mother bird brings food, she never has to ask the little ones to open their mouth. No need, no need. No need. They are already open. Am I correct? The mother's bird only difficulty is to fill in the gap, fill in the gap. And they are quite sure they are present there because the, all these baby birds, they have such appetite and eagerness like never before. They have what we call insatiable appetite. Look at the nest of the little bird reaching up with their mouth and all opening them as wide as they can. This shows that whenever we do open to God, He will fill. We open our mouth wide when we have a sense of needs, when we are hungry. What is your need? What is your sense of need? You know, my granddaughter. Can you have a picture of my granddaughter? Okay, this is my granddaughter, Elise. She just finished a bath and she is just, she, I think she is less than a month old at that time. Okay, my, my, my little granddaughter, okay, Elise. She was only 2.7 kg when she came out of Joy's womb. But her appetite is literally insatiable. 
Scary. You know, there was one time Pastor Lee and me, we went to visit her. We have to mark attendance. Huh? If we don't mark attendance, they will get angry. So we went. Okay, every day we have to mark attendance. So there was one time Pastor Lee and me, we went. We stayed there for two hours. She was only 2.7 kg. And Joy was complaining that Elise, her appetite for milk is so scary. First, they gave her 40 ml. 30 ml. Then it grows up to 60 ml. Then finally, they give her 100 ml. And she's only, she's only just a few, few days old, like five or six, or maybe a week old. She was just that kind of young. And they fill, fill her with the 60 ml. I don't know. I think that time was 60 or uh, 120. You see, 120. And she finished. She finished. And she started crying again. And Joy got to rush to the, to the fridge and warm out the, the breast milk and give her another bottle. And she finished. And she will cry again. And they have to go back and get another. Just imagine. I mean, I mean, that span of two hours, I see her drinking three bottles. And if the bottle is late, I tell you, when the thing did not go to her mouth, she'll be kicking, she'll be kicking, and the next moment she'll ah! And we'll fill her. We'll fill her with the meal. In the span of that two hours, did joy deprive her of any milk? No. Is joy angry with her over the milk that she wants? No. Because joy loves her. Joy treasures her. Joy wants her to grow. Same thing with us. That's the way God looks at us. And she has grown very fast. She is 5 kg right now. In a span of just a month or plus. God wants us to be like the baby bird. God wants us to be like Elise. This insatiable appetite. Open our mouth wide and God will feel it. When do you open your mouth wide? When you have a need. When you have a sense of need. Am I correct? I don't know what is your need. When you have a sense of need. When you are hungry. When you want something that is large, that means something that is extraordinary, something that is miraculous, something that is not out of the ordinary, something that nobody, no other people can perform for you except your mighty God. When we understand the greatness of our God, then we open our mouth wide. When we pray on Jesus' merit, not our own, God will answer you, not because of yourself but because of God I remember I came back after the uh, after visiting uh, Singapore for a month and I was not I was very frankly I was mentally very tired but when I was ready to pre preach on the pulpit I just don't know how to explain to you I just sense that God said that don't worry just go I'll help you and God just help me and preach just help me to preach. God knows. God can help you. Like the rain. I always pray that God will protect Ilolo City. I always say that God, you will protect Ilolo City because of eventual tabernacle. God can do it. You may easily uh, over expect concerning a human. Okay, the human cannot perform what your expectation. But you cannot over-expect God. God is more than able. So likewise, the baby bird and Elise, open your mouth wide. Wide and dilate the desire and expectation of our soul. And God is able to fill every ching to the vastest capacity. And this honors God. When we channel our expectation, rather than go to this foreign God, rather than go to this thing. Joel is in... The vow, helping a, a friend. Because this friend got some problem. And I respect him for doing that, trying to bring the gospel to him. And the, the, the family was worried and they wanted to bring uh, this friend of his to go and see a kwak kwak. Joel said, the day you bring him to see a kwak kwak, I step up. I'm not helping anymore. I'm not helping anymore. Do you understand me? 
Only God gets the glory. Only God gets the satisfaction. When we channel our expectation, I don't know, you have a sense of need. Are you hungry? You're asking for a large thing, but you understand the greatness of God and you need to pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' merit, not your merit. Not because of who you are. Open your mouth wide refers to two aspects of the human needs. The temporal needs and the spiritual needs. Okay? The temporal needs are the earthly needs which most of you are more concerned about than the spiritual needs. Let's talk about the temporal needs. God does not send us away when you come to Him or complain that you come so often so that we ask so, and, then, and that we ask so much. But here He encourages our greatest expectation and beat us, open your mouth wide. Such immense encouragement does He give to all with bonus of our prayer. For instance, ask God for healing. I feel that God wants to heal many of you. I do not know when I was praying about, uh, I was going through my devotion on Elijah and Elisha. I just have this inkling that God wants to heal. So, don't doubt. Open your mouth wide and ask for healing. The woman with the issue of blood, press in and the song said, He touched me, He touched me. Oh, the joy! Because he touched me. Let's talk about financial needs. Is you worrying where to get the money? Why don't you pray? Why can't be like the baby birds? Be like Elise. Open your mouth wide and you will feel real. This is temporal needs. So God is saying that I will take care of your needs. I, I'm, I'm not going to take care of your, your want. But I'll take care of your needs. I will provide for you sufficient and more than enough. You don't have to worry. There's a temporal needs. Let's talk about the spiritual needs. God definitely refers to the spiritual needs when we talk about opening what? Our mouth. Okay, Pastor Lily is saying that this coming Tuesday, we are having our Holy Ghost encounter. The theme is Come Holy Spirit. One of the most important and powerful desires God wants us to open our mouth wide and He wants to feel it is the baptism and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. This refers to the revival and the renewal of the soul. The greatest saying of the Bible teaches that God's bestowing or bestowal of the Holy Spirit are practically measured by man's capacity and desire. That means how much God fills you depends on your desire. Depends on your desire. The ultimate limit of them is His own limited, limitless grace. God is limitless in His grace. The only hindrance is your receptivity, your expectancy, your desire. They are all the decide determining factor. Charles Version say, Our cup is small and we blame the fountain. You know, last month, we had fellowship with Pastor Ruth. Um, she asked us to go out to a very cozy cafe in Singapore. We talked, I think we talked there for three to four hours. Pastor uh, Ruth was very troubled. She was very troubled by something and she cannot share with her fellow friends, her fellow pastors, because they are all from the same church. And she really need advice and counselling because she was making a very important decision. She has no one to talk to and when she, she realised that two of us are back, she said, can I go out with two of you? You see, you must understand that there is a group of Christians in Singapore right now. They are coming together to pray for the celebration of the 50th year of Jubilee, of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Singapore. You see, in Singapore in 1982, the Holy Spirit came in such a powerful way. That time, I was just a three-year-old Christian. I tell you, my church was just a hundred plus. We were in a bungalow house. We were meeting in a bungalow house. But the Spirit of God just moved. I think not just our church, but the whole of Singapore. And our church grew to 2,000 today. And we, we just, something is different in the air because of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So they are coming together 
And they, they, they know that the Holy Spirit changed the society of Singapore in 1982. And they want the Holy Spirit to do likewise one more time in, 19, uh, in 2002. That is 50 years already. Yeah, 2022. I can tell you that because of that outpouring of Holy Spirit, 20 to 30% of Singapore brains are born again, baptized. You know, the Prime Minister to be, okay, many members of parliament in the government, and I thank God for them, many members of parliament in the government are Christian. The guy that is going to take over Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong, most likely this year, next year, or the year after, which is Lawrence Wong, he is a member of the Methodist Church. And I told you that, that uh, my doctor that performed for me my day surgery is also a Christian. It is it's so interesting that many high-caliber intellectual professionals are born again. They occupy 30 to 40% of the echelon of the higher income group people, income bracket people. So, these Christians want to see another outpouring of the Holy Spirit which is 2022. And Pastor Ru was looking at her own church. She was looking at her own church. She realized that the church was always on the go, do this, do that. A lot of community penetration, a lot of works, a lot of money spent, but no soul safe. And she realized that the, the members of the church are very dry, lukewarm, and nominal Christian. Like I was telling you, I have a friend that went out with us and he, he, he don't want to go to church at all, and he's from that church. And he's from that church. And so she was given a schedule to preach. She said, I'm given a schedule. I take this opportunity to preach. So she preached. And she preached on the Holy Spirit. At the end of the service, she asked for altar call, which they seldom give altar call. She asked the people, those that want a touch from God, to come to the altar. And as they come, she asked the musician to sing the song, Come, Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me. Ah, huh? come, Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me. I tell you, the Spirit of God move, and many people at the altar call will touch, and you were very blessed, very blessed. And the message here, thank you so much for the service. Immediately after the service, the senior pastor of the church brought her to one side, and rebuked her. Said the song, "Come, Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me," is theologically wrong. If you want to talk about theologically wrong songs, there are thousands of songs that are theologically wrong. Okay? You, you, you want to talk about theologically wrong song? And she said that the Holy Spirit is actually the third fiddler. I tell you, I cannot understand. What do you mean fiddler? Third fiddler. So Jesus is the second fiddler. God is the first. Second fiddler, third fiddler. Are you going to say that? No, are you going to say that? But my Bible tells me that the Holy Spirit is God. And this is a dispensation of the Holy Spirit. And she rebuilt Pastor Ruth. And she, he, he emailed Pastor Susan Chu, who was in charge of the musician, like, okay, I emailed Mark, Marco. Why you sing a song that Pastor Ruth wants you to sing? Come, Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me. Both of them got scolded. She was so troubled. She was so troubled. And that church, I know that church. It was that church. Because of 1982, there were only 100 people. The church was so small because everybody was leaving his church. Until one day, they cannot have service. They only got 50 plus people and they have a circle and they were praying. That's how bad the church is. And they were so desperate. And they, they, they called for the Holy Spirit. They asked for the Holy Spirit. They went to seek for the Holy Spirit. And there was a Holy Spirit a service, a revival conference. And they went and they were touched. And the church grew from 100 to 2,000 today. So now today your church is 2,000. You want to usher out the Holy Spirit again? You want to usher out the Holy Spirit? Ru was making a decision on whether to confront the senior pastor in front of all the elders. And she knew that she will have to leave the church. Pastor Lily and I said, no, you don't do that. See, you must be wise. Say, Pastor Ruth, don't. Pray that God will remove him. 
and let the new leadership take on a new vision. Because if you live right now, Ruth, you have such passion for this church. When you are out of the church, you have no more power, you have no more ability to help the church, steer the church to another new heights. She said, thank you, Pastor Tony and Pastor Lily. Your advice was a confirmation that my husband also told me the same, that I have to stay. Keep quiet, keep your mouth shut. Don't always quarrel with them. You know, that statement, I went back with Pastor Lily. I think I was very troubled. I was very, very troubled because what do you mean the Holy Spirit is the third fiddler? I, I just don't understand what you're trying to say. But I know that God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are equal. The Holy Spirit is not third. The Holy Spirit is equal with God. You are on the verge, you are on the borderline of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. I was praying. And it's so interesting. God gave me the answer. And from an article titled, I was doing my devotion, okay? Not just, I was just doing my devotion and the title was, Come Holy Spirit. I want to read to you. I think God is trying to tell us, maybe 2022, if we hunger, God can do something for our church. 2022, the pastor wrote, he wrote this, okay? His title was, Come Holy Spirit. He said, spending time in the presence of God is the most important activities of your life. You need God's presence in your life more than you need anything else. But where do we find the presence of God? And the senior pastor said this, I remember so well for the first time, I heard someone pray one of the most ancient prayers of the church, come Holy Spirit, with an expectation that the Holy Spirit will come. It was a Sunday night, 1982, 15 years ago, we had a meeting in Crip after the evening service. As, as, as we pray, come Holy Spirit, we see remarkable events occur. We see people being filled with the Holy Spirit, with physical manifestations similar to those described in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost. We saw extraordinary physical healing take place the following day when someone prayed, come Holy Spirit. God is always present with His people today by the Holy Spirit. When you pray, come Holy Spirit, you are asking for an increased sense of the presence of God. There is times in the New, in the New Testament when the Holy Spirit had a gathering and people, and He moved sovereignly like the book of Acts. There are other times when the disciples prayed for the Holy Spirit and the place was filled. It was like in the Old Testament, the glory of God filled the temple. I believe the jubilee of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is only possible when your mouth is open wide. Yes, when your mouth is open wide. Ask God to repeat the meeting of Pentecost. I did not plan this. Okay, this was part of my sharing already. I'm not supposed to share. Pastor Lily is supposed to share today. And Pastor Lily decided to do the baptism, uh, the, the, the Come Holy Spirit service. I ask many of you, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? Or you replied that the people, of, like the people of Book of Acts, we have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Spirit well, this coming Tuesday, come and let us lay hand on you and the Holy Spirit will come upon you Amen. and you will be changed. Hallelujah. Number three, stubborn heart. The third thing, okay, first thing is no foreign God. God is your only God. Second thing, open your mouth wide. God will fill you. That means don't always look for all this, the world for satisfaction. Look for me for satisfaction. And I will fear it. Number three, stubborn heart. Verse 11, But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own hearts this last, and they walked in their own counsel. But my uh, New American Standard Bible, But my people would not, did not listen to my voice, and Israel did not obey me. So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their heart to walk in their own devices. You know, some of us, we are so stubborn, so st Frankly, all humans are stubborn. We are all so stubborn, I tell you. The third thing God viewed the human life is that of stubbornness. This is a tragedy of Christian. God was ready to fill the church 
filled with open mouth, but they will not obey him. God said, but Israel would none of me. So God gave them to their own stubborn heart. This is the same judgment on the Old Testament saints and on the Christian today. Listen carefully, okay? This one is very important. To give them over to the stubbornness of their heart. To walk in their own counsel. One of the greatest judgment God can bring upon each and every one of us is to simply leave you alone. Just leave you alone. Let you have your way. You thank God if God did not leave you alone. I said last week, a Christian has hope when God makes life difficult for him. It means that God is still with you. He cares for you to let you suffer and experience pain. Because then you will mature and learn humility and learn dependence upon God and change. But it is very, very frightening. And a more terrible sentence when God simply leaves you alone. Simply leave you alone. Let you have what you want. That's a scary part. That means it's too late. You're finished. John Trapp said this, if God leave you alone to your own stubbornness and foolishness, it's like God left you as a sheep without a rudder. Just think of a sheep without a rudder. No rudder. Without a rudder. As a horse without a rein. To go whither you would and do whatever you want to do. This portion of scripture reveals a constant method of God with his disloyal and disobedient children. When they will not go his way, he let them go their way. I let you go your way. I let you go your way. Carefully, brothers and sisters. It's very scary to let God have us have our own way. I'll be honest concerning my two children. Joy left us when she was 15. Uh, 15. Jen left us when she was 13. 20 years has passed. 20 years has passed. 20 years has changed a lot. Our grip on their life is no more like before. We only can pray. Then when, when we speak our mind out, we always go into a fight or a quarrel. So nowadays, we don't fight so much, but we pray, we pray and we pray. I, I respect Pastor Lily. Jen was so troublemaker, such a troublemaker, but I saw Pastor Lily just pray for her, but don't want to quarrel her, don't want to fight her. We are always concerned for their spiritual life. Okay, I'm not saying that they backslided. Okay, I'm not saying they, they didn't go to church. They go to church every Sunday. They have cell group. But you mean your life is just go to cell group, go to church, and you do nothing for God, and you just expect, because I go to church, because I go to cell group, God, you are required to bless me every day. It's not your life. No, I'm asking you, it's not your life. How about the call of God in your life? How about the souls? You know, recently, uh, Pastor Rowena, we're asking her to come back already for a break. She's coming back for a break. So Pastor Rowena said she needs to renew her visa. So I asked, Joy and Jen, are you willing to contribute a little bit for their visa? Joy said, Daddy, why must be so formal? Here's $400. I gave it, I wrote the same letter to Jen. No answer for the next three, four days. Then last night, Daddy, I'm busy. Come on now, don't bluff, okay? I'm busy. Okay, I'll give you the money. The money is not for me. The money is for the missionaries. We are worried for their spiritual life. And if your children are not doing well, you should be worried for their spiritual life. Pastor Lily, don't pray for their success anymore. Yeah. Oh, excellence. You know, we always pray for excellent. They shall excel in the land. They shall be excellent. No, recently, Jen was having a really hard time. I thank God she gave the money, okay? Thank God that she still go to church. Thank God she still had conviction. But she's literally the children of the last days. Don't tell her that. She really, recently, she really had a hard time dealing with her immediate boss. Her immediate boss is a terror. Her immediate boss is a problem maker. And she prayed, Daddy, can you pray that you will re God will remove her? Because this immediate boss is brash, irritable, a constant thorn in the flesh to Jen. 
They say, okay, I pray for you. And I pray. You know what happened? I pray. Okay, I don't have the prayer card, okay, but I have my prayer list. Okay? Pastor Lily start the prayer card. I don't fully understand, but I do my prayer list. And my prayer list is getting longer and longer. So I prayed for Jen. And the next news comes that, oh, she's going to be transferred out of the department. Wow, she's very happy. But Jen never changed. <laughs> she very, she's very, very stubborn girl. Very, she's always right. Huh? She's never wrong. Okay, so she will be transferred. But the timing of the transfer is indefinite. <laughs> she can be transferred in six months' time or she can be transferred in one month's time. And nobody wants her, this new this boss of Jen, because she is really a problem. No de- other department wants her to join them. Just two days ago, Jen asked, Mommy, can you pray that God will transfer her immediately? You know what Pastor Lily did? Pastor Lily said, No. I pray that God, you will not transfer this immediate boss. <laughs> but you will use her to mold Jen until she really learned her lessons. You thank God when God deals with you. That means you are still a child of God. When you are not dealt with God, by God, you are finished. The soul of Jen and joy are more important than their prosperity. Pastor Lily wants to preach on a, t- a sermon entitled Jeshurun Wax Fat and Kick. Jeshurun is the people of God. They wax fat means they are so blessed. They are so blessed and they start to kick. King means that they become very haughty, they become very self-absorbed, they become very rude, they become very stubborn. You know, many of us, we wax fat and we kick. What is Israel's history of rebellion and our history of rebellion? Do not listen. Do not obey. Have stubborn hearts. Walk in your own devices. I want to talk about the word stubbornness. The word stubbornness comes combination of the neck and stiff and heart. See your neck. Some of you have stiff neck. Okay, your, when your neck is stiff, it becomes hard. Am I correct? You cannot move. You cannot turn. Stiff neck. God said, many of us we have stiff neck. The adjective is that the person's behavior is very haughty and very stubborn. Some people have stiff neck pride. In the Bible, to be stiff neck is to be very obstinate, to be very difficult to lead. Israel is often described as a combination of stubbornness and willing to follow God's law. Many of us, we are like that. Because we are so stubborn and obstinate and difficult to lead. And God said, don't be stubborn. That's the third thing that God said to you. Don't be stubborn. Don't be stubborn. Because you can just suddenly fall and die. Don't be stubborn. Lastly, number four. What God has prepared for them. I'm finishing. Finishing, okay? This is very beautiful. God told you, don't have any foreign God. He's your only God. God told you, uh, don't have any foreign God. God told you to always come to Him, open your mouth wide, and you'll feel it. And God told you not to have stubbornness. And next thing God said, I have something prepared for you. I have, I have a, a beautiful plan and a beautiful purpose and a be- beautiful future for you. This is what God wants. God has a future for each and every one of us. What God has prepared for them. Number one, subducing your enemy. The fourth thing that God viewed the human life is He will subdue your enemy and bless you. Let's talk about subducing your enemy. God said, I will soon subdue your enemy. Another translation, another translation said, I will soon subdue your enemy. This is the unclaimed blessing. Some people are giving you trouble, right? You go and pray against them. Destroying your family, right? Destroying your marriage, right? Destroying your relationship, right? Pray! God said, I will soon subdue your enemy. This is an unclaimed blessing God wanted to give to a believing and obeying people. If God's people will only listen, listen and be obedient and just be, be a good person, God said, I will subdue your enemy and I will fight for them. I will fight against them. I will fight against your enemies. Our enemy can have the sharpest weapon, but they can never overthrow us. They can never, never overthrow us. 
if we don't overthrow ourselves, sin strip you of your armor, leave you naked to your enemies. So God say, I will subdue your enemy. You know, some of you, your enemy is not subdued yet. Not because God did not do anything. He has to do with you. He has to do with you. Secondly, God said, I will give you the finest of the wheat and the honey from the rock. You know what God is saying now? If you serve me properly, if you walk with me properly, I will richly provide for you and satisfy you if you only listen and obey. God said, I will feed you with the finest of wheat, the best. Okay? Better than any tinapa here. Huh? We all like what? Angelina Superlove. Huh? Angelina Superlove. We all love Angelina Superlove. The Singaporean friend, Pastor Ruth, come here just specially to buy Angelina Superlove and bring back to Singapore to eat. It's really nice. It's really nice. But the finest of it here is nicer than Angelina Superlove. God said, I'll give you the finest of it. That means I will give you the finest, the best. Then God said, I will give you honey from the rock. Hua. Honey from the rock evidently means honey of the best. Native honey stored by bees in the cleft of the rock. The cleft of the rock is the, the what do you call it? The split of the rock, the cavity of the rock, the cleft of the rock. I, I'll show you some picture. Okay, this is the rock, the cleft. You see, inside are all the honeys. I will give you honey from the rock, the cleft of the rock. And they are not just there. They are found the next page. Okay? Hidden in the cleft of the rock. That means God, God said, I give you something that is very nice. That is found in the cleft of the rock only. Next one, the honey. Do you have another one, honey? Ah, honey. Honey from the rock will, will satisfy you. You know, I was, there was one time I remember, I never forget Pastor Lily's sermon. And I said, uh, you shared it. She said, yeah, but I did not write down. She shared about the wall honey that was deposit, deposited by the bees in the cleft or the split of the rock that is high up in the mountain. And this honey was the most delicate and the most valuable. I show you a BBC short video of how they try to harvest the honey from the cleft of the rock. Very short one. The honey from the rock. God is talking about this honey that is very rare, very hard to find. You know, you all have bird nest, El Nido. El Nido means bird nest, right? I mean, I heard that we were in El Nido. I heard that to get the bird nest, a kilo is a few thousand US dollars. This honey from the rock is the best food of the best of the land. The best food of the land. It is regarded as the most delicate and the most valuable. It's an allusion to the abundance in Canaan. Canaan is not heaven. Canaan is blessing, our blessing while here on earth. God said, I will give you. You walk with me, I will give you the best. The honey from the rock is definitely pointing towards Jesus Christ. The honey from the rock also meant it's found only in high places. It has to be sick. It has to be searched. The heavily is that we have to seek it to receive it. Honey from the rock represents a life of delightful to one who eats it. Honey adds sweetness and joy to the one eating it. I am impressed by God's offer of wild honey. 
Honey not only have nutritional benefits, it's to delight one person, and that is you who eats it. God is saying that I will give you. You know, God said, I'll give you uh, milk and honey. You know what he's trying to say? I'm giving you the best of the best. I believe that Israel, if they obey God, the oil in the Middle East, in the Middle East would have belonged to Israel. I believe. I believe. But they missed it. You know, it said that in Saudi Arabia, their oil in the bank is one trillion dollar. One trillion dollar. They don't have to do anything, just uh, harvest it. We think of obeying God in terms of what we must give out. But God said, no. I created honey for you to have ability to enjoy it, to live a life full, rich, meaningful, genuine pleasure. Just follow His way. I conclude. Many of us, we fail miserably. We are worshipping foreign gods. We don't open our mouth wide. We are very stubborn people. And we miss the honey and the finest of it. But we have Jesus. He worshipped only the true God. He called His Father Yahweh Father. And He said, I only come to do the will of my Father. When you fail, He represent you. He fulfilled it. He was never stubborn. He was always humble and meek and always obedient to God. And his mouth was always open wide to receive from God. And he received. He never has any lack. Jesus has never had any lack at all. The, 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 the Pharaoh's daughters, whatever, they are always supplying him income so that he will continue the ministry. Not a lot, but always enough. Always enough. We fail in all this. Jesus knew that we failed and he went to the cross to die for you to die for your stubbornness, to die for your sin, to die for your worship of the foreign God, to die for missing the wall, honey, missing the finest of it. And He forgave you of your sin, and He crucified you, and He was crucified, and He came out, and He said that, I've overcome. For your sake, I bear your sin, and I've overcome. He said that, I have come to empower you, he said, I will make you willing in the day of your, pow in, of your power, in the way, day of His power. Now is the day of His power. Now is Jubilee. He will make you willing. He will make you obedient. And He will empower you. And He will cause you to not be stubborn anymore. Peter was never stubborn anymore. Peter was willing to be cruci up crucified upside down. The people were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And they are always receiving the Holy Spirit. Their mouth are always opening wide because of what Jesus has done at the cross. And He said, if you will come to me today, likewise, I will do it for each and every one of you. So this morning, come and let us receive the blessing of God in our life. Musician, can you come? Shall we all stand up? I want you to picture the birds, the baby birds, and think of Elise. Is your hunger for God, hunger for your needs, as much as the birds? I want to think of, I want you to think of the plan, the blessing that God has intended for you by looking at the wild honey. I want you to think of it. And I want to think of your stubborn life. I want you to think of your foreign gods. And I want you to come to Jesus and say, Jesus, I'm sorry. Please forgive me of my sin. Thank you for dying on the cross of Calvary for my sin. I can't do anything. Only by your power. When you change Peter, when you change the 12 disciples, you can change me. Now is the day. Now is the time. 
for you to come and feel each and every one of us. Let's sing, let's sing. you to come to your altar you have to open your mouth wide and let God fill you those of you that have financial needs this is your temporal needs I want you to come also to the altar you don't come for me you come for God and those of you that your life is so dry so lukewarm so nominal you you, you, you are defeated Christian you are defeated Christian you need the power of the Holy Spirit. You need to see Jesus, the victory, the victory that Jesus has conquered and overcome to come upon you so they have victories and become an overcomer. You also come. You also come. And those of you, you are so hungry for something. You are so hungry. You, you have a need. You have a terrible need and you really need God to answer this prayer I also want you to come come to the altar and you come not looking at one another you come for Jesus and you come focus on Jesus and you come wanting God to help you and you open your mouth and you feel it you come like the baby birds you come like Elise as we sing you come Father, I bring before you those that are sick right now. I bring before you those that are sick right now. I ask for the anointing of Elisha and Elisha, the double portion. And I ask for healing right now. I ask for healing right now. I ask that you heal them right now. Heal. Heal right now. Be free. Be free. Be free right now. Totally free, totally heal. In the power of Jesus' name. Yes, yes. Heal, heal, heal right now. Heal. Yes, the pain gone. The back pain gone. The back pain gone. The pain in the neck is gone, gone, gone right now, gone. Because the word of God rests upon you. Because the spirit of God rests upon you. How will God rest upon you right now? Oh, Father, those of you that have financial needs, those of you that have financial needs, lift up your hand. Okay, those of you that are have financial needs, I want you to leave both hands with close to one another. And live up to God like you're receiving. Show, uh, like what I'm doing right now. You're receiving. You're receiving this financial blessing. Sing. Shall we sing? I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, pour. Pour the gold. Pour the gold. Pour the silver. Upon the hands right now. Upon the palms of the hand right now. Feel it right now. Feel it right now. Fury right now. 
And say, my father, help me. And I will quickly come and deliver you. I will quickly come and help you. I will quickly come and turn things around. I will quickly come and bless your life. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for healing your people. Thank you for blessing them financially. Thank you for meeting their needs right now. Thank you for forgiving them of their sins and cleansing them by the blood of Jesus Christ. And God said, I have answered your prayer. God said, I have answered your prayer not because of your merits, but because of Jesus Christ. And in Jesus' name, because of my son's name, I will hear your prayer, I will answer your need, I will deliver you, I will bless you, and I will set you free, and I will give you abundantly more than whatever you ask and think. Father, thank you 
Thank you. And Father, I pray that you bring the people coming Tuesday. Help us, help us for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, for the come Holy Spirit. Help us not to miss out also on what you want to do for the end times. Father, I also pray for this city right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Protect this city, protect this city. Thank you for protecting this city for so many years, for so many years and we are grateful. And we ask one more time, one more time, you protect this city from any disaster, from any problem. We thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You may be seated.